So I decided to take a quick pit stop at the hotel room. That way I can tell you about every single thing I've seen thus far at Pinball Expo. Fortieth anniversary celebration this year. It's bigger, it's better, it's more grandiose than ever before. It certainly feels like it. The vendor hall is jam packed with all sorts of things you've never seen before. Uh, it's got pinball machines, of course. We got arcade games. We got the retro video game, video game summit tied in there. So essentially, you got two conventions going on simultaneously. You got vendors selling anything and everything your hearts desire when it comes to pinball accessories. You name it. I'll give you a rundown of everything I've went through and saw and played and enjoyed thus far, manufacturer by manufacturer. Timestamps in the video description box below, but guys, you need to be here. It's Friday. If you're watching this video right now, get off your butt, click out of the video, come to Pinball Expo. If you're watching this in the future, tell me if my Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl and what your favorite experience at Pinball Expo was this year. So let's start things off with the big behemoth themselves, Stern Pinball, the largest manufacturer. Obviously they came in full force, uh, highly touted X-Men just released, came out Jack Danger, phenomenal designer. I love this game. I've already talked about it in uh, depth as far as my first impressions of playing the LE. This was my first experience also getting to play the premium and the pro models. And I'm a big fan of all variations of this game. I'm leaning towards the pro model for a personal ownership decision for me personally. Uh, the premium LEs, they look nice and everything, but just I don't feel the necessary need to have those kind of little added features that are in the premium and the LE uh, myself. I was also fortunate enough to get a little early invite by Stern to do a little pre-media uh, factory tour on Thursday. There we got to see the new LE and premium models of the Metallica Remastered. And guys, if you're a fan of the Metallica pinball machine of yesteryear, you are absolutely gonna be drooling and in love with this. I truly believe they've literally improved upon every single aspect the original game had with this new model. Now, obviously art is subjective and there's gonna be some people out there that are absolutely in love with the Dirty Donnie artwork that was on the original machine. And that is all by the wayside. Brand new artwork on this, but me personally, I love the new artwork. I prefer it so much more over the Dirty Donnie um, artwork. Not that it was bad, but I just, I like the new artwork more. Um, the band on there with the, the UV ink with their faces show the skeletal remains. That is so amazing. And of course the LCD, Animation, this is some of the best animation, if not the best animation of any Stern Spike 2 game that I've ever seen. So my, you know, tip of the cap to them, they did a phenomenal job there. And supposedly there's a thousand new callouts from the band. What I did get to hear was very, you know, on brand with Metallica. And it was just, it's a blast to play. It feels mechanically improved. The new mechanics, the new design, just you know the concert footage everything about it the sound the the lighting integration the speaker lights you name it there's there's just nothing but good things to say about this metallica game so supposedly it's going to be here at expo on saturday for the public so like i said get off your butt and get to expo because there's still time to play this brand new metallica game it's great the stern factory tour was amazing got to see loads of x-men's being built they're on the line currently and it is worth the trip just to check out the silver ball that's right stern's got its own variation of the chicago bean they got a ginormous chrome silver ball out front and you definitely got to check it out if you're in the area and the prettiest girl at prom, so to speak, this year at Pinball Expo is definitely going to be Alice in Wonderland from Dutch Pinball. Uh, unfortunately, there's only two machines here to play and test out, so there's a steady flow of traffic lined up at all times to play this machine. Got to have some time with it. It is enjoyable. It definitely feels like every other J-pop game as far as I'm concerned, as far as, you know, flow, uh, aesthetically, design-wise, everything. This definitely is a premium machine. They went all out as far as sculpts and details, like slingshot plastics they're not just flat plastics with reflective glittery images no 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 everything has 3d sculpts and molds and you know everything is just feels like you're in that world under glass because they went to excruciating detail to make this such a 
wonderfully amazing, detailed, intricate, sculpted. I mean, they just did a great job with that. I mean, that is where this game excels. Um, where it falls a little flat, me personally, is you know some of the animation call out. Animation looks fine, but the voice is going with it. Specifically, looking at you, Mad Hatter, it sounds so weird and creepy. It almost sounds like uh, Herbert the Pervert from Family Guy, and that just really kind of draws you out of that World Under Glass experience because you're like, wait a minute, why does he sound so weird, and why are these call outs so bad when everything else is so good on this game? But uh, honestly, I can't afford this game, so it doesn't really matter, but if you have a chance, get in line and play it because it is an experience and it is a beautiful machine. Next up, Jersey Jack prominently displaying their avatar games. Beautiful machines. Jersey Jack makes beautiful machines. Just let's put a pin in that right there. They make phenomenally aesthetically pleasing machines. Uh, I've been critical about earlier games having mushy weak flippers. Definitely doesn't feel the case anymore. Ever since you know Elton John, I think maybe even Toy Story, the flippers just feel so much stronger, so much more snappier, more powerful. This feels in line with uh, the recent Elton John release as far as flipper strength and power and just snappiness and overall. I really enjoy this game. I think you're gonna definitely have to be a fan of the IP Avatar. I don't think this is gonna be one of those games where the gameplay is just so phenomenal that it brings you in and you start saying, hmm. Should I buy an Avatar machine? Unless you're already a giant fan of the franchise itself. Like I said, it's a great aesthetically pleasing game. It's fun to play, but I just don't think it's gonna draw in a bunch of people that aren't already fans of Avatar as a whole. Tree of Souls. Kick back his feet. Spooky Pinball's got their latest releases here available to play as well. You got Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you got their older release, Scooby-Doo, and Looney Tunes. I absolutely love Looney Tunes. I enjoy every single time I play it. It's just a unique layout, same layout as Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but obviously a little more family friendly. Uh, it shoots like a dream. It's a flow monster. It's got some unique setups. I, I just enjoy the design, the layout of that so much. And of course, Looney Tunes being a childhood, uh, you know, family dynamic where my parents would plop me in front of a TV and just turn on cartoons. So Looney Tunes, very near and dear to my heart. So the IP itself, um, it, it, it resonates with me. So I have enjoyed every single time I've played it. So definitely check those out. Chicago Gaming Company also here on site with their latest releases, Pulp Fiction amazing retro meets modern game and of course their latest williams valley kind of remastered re-release if you will cactus canyon uh no brand new code update on that yet or at least nothing that i could tell it's still kind of the same gameplay experience um they've been talking for a long time that they're going to get some brand new code out there but still haven't seen it as of yet but either way great machines if you do have the opportunity definitely check out cactus canyon and pulp fiction no brand new game from American Pinball this year, at least not at Expo. Uh, last year they debuted Galactic King Force. This year they're still trying to push uh, Barrio's Barbecue Challenge. I'm sorry, but good luck with that. I just, I don't see a lot of people out there willing to spend uh, the money that they could buy a, a Stern Pro or one of these other games for, for a Barrio's Barbecue Challenge, unfortunately. The only real news coming out of American Pinball is that they are now the global distributor or uh, at least they have the global distribution rights for the Polycade, which is a great arcade system. It just happens to be ugly as sin. I'm sorry, but it's a hideously designed machine aesthetically, but internally it plays great. It has all sorts of options where you can play all sorts of games from like Steam or Game On Go. So that's cool. But again, American Pinball, I don't know what you guys are doing, pushing that Barrios Barbecue Challenge. You need something new. Pedretti Gaming's here with a brand new Fun House as well as their like Fun House Remake 2.0, whatever you want to call it, uh, with all brand new artwork from Brian Allen. It looks phenomenal. Me personally, I like the Brian Allen artwork and art style more than the original, but obviously TV's thrown. If you're you know near and dear and you grew up with Fun House, the original, obviously you're probably not gonna like the Brian Allen stuff as much, but me personally, I like the new revised variation. Um, playing it, it does feel like Fun House, albeit, it does feel a little bit newer as far as the snappiness and the mechanics and everything. It just, it's as close to that Bally Williams feel as far as the flippers as they can get, but it's just not 100% there. You definitely feel 
like you're playing Funhouse, but you definitely know you're playing a remade version of Funhouse. It's not the same 100% experience that you would have got from a classic machine. And it's very easy to tell that here on Expo because I can go play an original Funhouse and then five seconds later go over and play this one. But the opportunity to buy a brand new Funhouse is something that might be intriguing for some people out there that are less inclined to maybe, you know, work on an older machine. So keep that in mind. It is a classic game. It is a great game. And this is an opportunity for you to buy a great classic game that's brand new. Turner Pinballs here showing their final production release for Ninja Eclipse. This has went through a couple of variations. I've seen pretty much every iteration of this, whether it be at the original Expo uh, debut, Texas Pinball Fest. I've seen all sorts of different variations of this machine. Seeing the final product, it looks nice, it plays nice. The theme, obviously, it's gonna be something that's gonna be hit or miss for a lot of people, but as far as the coding, the light work, um, the pricing, it's $6,999 or $95. So basically a Stern Pro, um, you do get powder coated armor and a couple of other attribute things that you don't necessarily get in the Stern stuff. But as far as a recognizable IP and a non-recognizable IP being at the same price point, one being the world's biggest pinball manufacturer, another one being kind of a boutique, small, small manufacturer, it's really kind of hard to, you know, get somebody to say, yeah, I will spend my $7,000 with you versus those other more established people. But either way, I, I love to see more people creating pinball. I hope things continue to do well for him and I hope, you know, maybe he can keep making more pinball machines and making a better value um, later down the road. Pinball Brothers brought their latest game, ABBA, to the show. Uh, very simply put, I'm just not an ABBA person, not a fan, don't really care about the, the band, sorry uh, to anyone out there, no hard feelings. Uh, I will say it does, you know, play much better than some of their other games, so uh, Queen, great band, love that band to death. That machine though, unfortunately, just plays like garbage in my opinion. Uh, this one plays significantly better, unfortunately it's just a, a band and a theme I don't really care a whole lot for, but as far as design and just gameplay mechanics and everything, it works so much better than their last attempt at a music pen with Queen, so at least it's a step in the right direction. Limited presence from P3, AKA Multimorphic, however you wanna describe them. Uh, but they did have the Princess Bride game. It is fun, enjoyable. Uh, they did have all their modules on display. So if you're curious on how the P3 platform works and things like that, they can walk you through it and show you all the demonstrations on how you change it out. Small footprint for them, just uh, two games on display. So far, Pinball Expo has been an absolute blast. Like I said, there's so much to see and do this year. It seems almost overwhelming. If you've been here, if you've been playing, if you're dreaming about coming next year, I definitely recommend it because this has been an absolute blast. I'm going to stop recording, I'm going to stop editing, and I'm gonna go play some more pinball. So guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions. What has been your favorite site, sound, release, announcement, you name it, tell me about it in the comments below from Pinball Expo. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit the like button. Share this video with your friends. If you found the information helpful. As always, thanks for watching guys. It really means a lot.